Hey guys, this is Justin, president of Gator Patch here in the Oaks Mall, also GatorPatch.com. Today we're going to do a different video. If you remember, we have Christian that comes into these videos every now and then. He's been with us for quite some time. He's attending UF for sports journalism. So he is going to come on and do a game by game prediction for the season. So if that's something you're interested in, stay tuned and go get it. Hey guys. It's Christian. Uh, like Justin said, I am a student about to be a junior, currently attending the University of Florida. Uh, I started in a couple weeks and uh, I'm going to the College of Journalism with a specialization in uh, sports. So I want to do sports journalism, uh, hopefully do broadcasting, stuff like that in the future. Uh, but today we're going to be doing season predictions. Now before we get into that, uh, first thing I want to talk about, Justice Boone, obviously. First scrimmage towards ACL. It's, it sucks, don't get me wrong, but this is why we have Billy going hard on the recruiting trail, going hard in the transfer port, all right? You've got guys like Kelby Collins who are going to be able to step up. You have specific guys that Billy got for this scenario, in case this scenario happened. Now, like I said, it sucks, all right? He was going to be one of our top defense alignment all year. He's out for the year. But like I said, you got to think that Billy prepared for a situation like this and was assu not assuming by any chance but thinking that there could be a scenario where he needs to have one of his other guys step up which is why he got good guys besides that let's go on to the season predictions first game we've got utah this is going to be a tough game obviously last year we saw them in the swamp and this year we're going to be going at them at utah now cam rising is a massive factor in this game all right last year i think he went for like 250 300 all-purpose yards something like that he was dominating in the passing and rushing game. But at the same time, if he's not in this game, that is a massive thing for the Gators. Massive. All right? The defense is the next step. The defense needs to show up. All right? We've got a new guy in Austin Armstrong. He's meant to come in here. He's meant to change the defense around. All right? We're going to be a more aggressive defense this year. You're going to see a lot more blitzes. You're going to see a lot more pressure up front. And... A key part of that is having good corners and safeties that we can rely on to afford to be able to blitz all these guys up in the front. You know, with these guys going at the offensive line hard, going at the quarterback trying to blitz, you got to be able to have your cornerbacks and safeties fully prepared to take on more in the coverage game. But I think Austin is prepared for that, and he wants to be a team that has those. While he's got a really good defensive line, he's going to also have strong corners, strong safeties. Now, the next factor of this game is the running game. Florida needs to establish the run in this game. You have Montrell Johnson and you have Trevor Etienne, who might be one of the best one-two punches in college football. You need to see at least 200 yards of rushing from these two guys combined. And that's a, that's a big ask, all right? That's almost, that is 100 yards for each guy. But it's something that's very possible with these two high caliber level players. And I think if you can get that done, it's going to be successful for the Gators in this game. Now, Graham Mertz, it's going to be his first game playing for Florida. Obviously, he played at Wisconsin, but this is going to be his first game. It's a new team. It's a new environment. He doesn't need to be great. He needs to be above average. You need a guy that's going to be able to complete your passes when you need him to. All right? He doesn't have to go make these spectacular plays like you expected Anthony Richardson to do fully leaping over a defense to throw a pass or sprinting out on a 60-yard run for a touch. He's not going to do that. All he needs to do is hit his passes. You establish that run game, you push through that run game, and then when you need to, you let Graham hit those quick 10, 15-yard passes. And that's just what's going to happen if you're going to be a successful team. That's going to be all year. You establish that run game, and then you let Mertz come in when he needs to. Because it's not going to be something where Mertz is going to be this spectacular, amazing core. He could be. He could, but I'm saying he doesn't need to be if we establish this run game early. And I think if all those things happen, I think we're going to get a win first week at Utah. So that would be 1-0 starting off. Week 2, we've got Migny State at home. There shouldn't be a lot of talk about this game. I mean, the game should be dominated by the run game. You've got Montrell and you've got Trevor. They're just going to be able to go boom, 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 back and forth, back and forth. Neither of the guys should get gassed. Whenever one guy's gassed, you throw in the other one. These are two top running backs that are going to be running off of like 
a not a good defense. All right, McNeese wasn't a good team last year. I think they went four and seven. Yeah, four and seven, something like that. This should be a landslide win for the Gators. Now, Graham Mertz, you're not going to see a lot of him in that Utah game. I think spectacular wise, this is a game where you should be able to let him open up and kind of work. All right, there's not going to be a lot of punishment towards him if he's slinging balls. All right, he's he's he, it's it's fine. All right, this is going to be a game that you assume the Gators are going to win by a lot, which means we want to see what Mertz can do. Now, it's not going to be an example of when he goes against SEC caliber teams, but you need to be able to see what he can do. And this is the perfect team to let him just open up and try to take over. All right, obviously should beat McNeese State by a landslide. All right, now week three, you've got Tennessee at home. They lost their starting quarterback, yes. Joe Milton is a very good backup. He's going to be a very good quarterback, and you need the defense to step up in this game if we want to win. Last year, they played against a very bad Florida defense, and we only lost by five points. The final was 38-33, and it was a close game. We had we was back and forth, and we had a chance to win the game at the end. We just weren't able to complete that last pass, and that's fine. All right, But this year, I think you have the opportunity to take these guys by storm. They're not expecting... Florida to be able to be a team that's going to come at them ferociously. I think you attack with that run game, and then you establish the de- the defense is going to be a big theme all year. You need to play your offense off of a good defense. If the defense is consistently getting the stops when you need to, the offense is going to be able to just flow. This will be a game that Merch has relied upon more. It's going to be one of his first big tests. Last year, Tennessee had a very good rushing defense. They were only allowing less than 120 yards a game for the rushing the pass defense however was allowing almost 300 yards a game that needs to be something that we take advantage of i understand we just said that Mertz isn't going to be spectacular you don't need him to be spectacular this is a bad passing defense and it has not gotten much better in the offseason in fact they've even lost some guys to the draft that's why you just need to see Mertz take a bigger role in this game obviously he's not going to do what Richardson did last year we threw 450 passing yards and like four or five touchdowns or something like that you just need to see him step up and I, I honestly think that if all those things happen Tennessee hasn't beat Florida in Gainesville since 2003 that's the year I was born all right that's the year I was born that's the last I'm 20 years old that's the last time Tennessee beat us in the swamp and I think that streak can I think that streak continues I'm going to say Florida's going to beat Tennessee. We're starting off 3-0. and It's a great start for Florida. No one thought we were going to start 3-0. and I think it's an amazing start. Week four, you've got Florida against Charlotte. This is another game like McNeese. You have those games on your schedule. You have two or three a year. That It's, it's, kind of, it's not a turn-your-brain-off game, but it's a game you don't have to worry about as much as the other. These are low-level teams. It's another team, like I said, like McNeese. It should be an easy game for the team. Not a lot to say there. But it's the same thing that I said with McNeese, where hopefully you start to see Mertz really find his stride in this game. You can allow him to be as open and free as he wants with the ball, because even if he's not producing like that, people will be producing in this game. Everyone's going to eat this game. It's that type of a game. No question, Florida should beat Charlotte. I'm saying UF starts out 4-0. and Week 5, you got to go play at Kentucky. It's a hard game. It's a, it's a very hard game. But last year, you played a better Kentucky team, and you lost by 10. I think Florida has this game circled. I think they're upset they won; la- they lost last year. And Kentucky lost their best player, Will Levis, to the draft. They're going to have a hard time finding their identity. It's still going to be early in the season. It's going to be week five. They're not going to have fully understood who they are as a team yet. And I think Florida needs to take advantage of that. Last year, like I said... They beat Florida in a game that UF played very poorly in, and they still only lost by 10. Kentucky has beat the Gators the last two years in a row, and I think UF wants revenge. And I'm going to say, I'm going to say they get in this game. So UF starting out 5-0. and oh, that's, a, that's, a very good, that's a very good start, one of the best Florida's had. And I, I do think it's very possible. Week 6, you've got Vandy. Vandy beat Florida last year. It was an ugly game. The floor still had a chance to win at the last second. And it was only the first win for Vandy since 2013. And this year, they have to come back to the Swamp. Last year, we played them at Vandy. This year, they got to come back to the Swamp. It's one of the hardest places to play in college football. The defense will have found its stride by now, I feel like. I'm going to make a bold prediction 
that Florida's defense is able to hold this Vandy team to under 14 points. Now, some people say that's not a bold prediction, but that Vandy offense wasn't the worst thing we've ever seen last year. It wasn't a terrible offense. Now, the defense was very, very bad. I think they, they ranked 125th out of 131 teams. That is a very, very bad defense. I think UF is going to dominate this game and destroy Vandy on their home turf. That's starting off 6-0. and Now, Florida has the hardest strength of schedule in the country, and you're about to see it because the back half of the schedule gets a lot more difficult. Week 7, you have Florida against South Carolina. UF embarrassed the Gamecocks last year. They beat them 38-6. to That is demolishing them. And that's a team that played good against a lot of teams last year. And Florida just went in and I don't even know what happened, honestly. Me and other people were watching that game and just didn't realize how we were just destroying South Carolina the whole game. I think South Carolina has this game circled on their calendar. UF has also beat South Carolina four of the last five years. And they were playing against not great South Carolina teams. And I think we're getting to a point where this South Carolina team they're bringing back a lot of the people they had last year. They're still going to be a very solid South Carolina team. They're going to be a better South Carolina team. Unfortunately, I think I think UF will play this game close. But in the end, I feel the combination of the home crowd, of the home crowd, and Spencer Rattler at QB is just going to be enough to hand the Gators their first loss. Which isn't it's not the end of the world. You're six and one. You're six and one going into week eight. Unfortunately, week eight you have Georgia. While my feelings might change further after I see this team play, at the moment. Georgia's the best team in college football. They've won the Natty the last two years in a row, and their only loss came to Alabama in the SEC Championship. And they still beat them that same year in the National Championship. They're an amazing football team. Now, they have a little bit of a QB controversy over there, and we don't know who's going to be dealing with it. But, I mean, it's not like Stetson Bennett was amazing. It's kind of like a 49er situation. I think anyone is going to produce in that system, and I think they're going to produce against us. I feel like Florida has the capability to keep this game close, and they've kept it close in the past, and they'll run the ball well, but I don't see Mertz being able to execute against this patented Georgia defense. It's a very, very good defense, and they've been a very, very good defense for a while. I think they get the best of us, and they hand UF back-to-back loss, which is its not the end of the world. Week 9, UF is 6-2 and at this point. You got Arkansas. I think you're going to see Arkansas take a decline after what they did last year. And that, they weren't even a, a great team last year. They were 6-6, six six, but they played a lot of good teams very, very close. And I think after last year, they're just going to take a step back. They had a terrible defense last year anyway. They gave up almost 500 yards of offense a game, over 290 in the air. Mertz needs to be able to take advantage of this. He doesn't need to throw for 290 yards. He needs to throw for 180 yards, 200 yards, 220 yards, and let, like I've said, been saying, let the run game produce. I think there's no chance that this run game is not a top five, a top three run game all season. You just have to let it produce. I think Mertz will shine in this game, honestly. And you'll see some of the freshman receivers, someone like Andy Jean, someone like Aiden Mizell, someone like Eugene Wilson III. These are going to be guys that have the ability to make the receiver room in Florida a top one like it has been in previous years. And it's going to be very scary for opponent corners to deal with this room, not just now, but in the future. Because these guys are staying, and they're not, they're not going anywhere. I think with all those things said, I think you're going to beat Arkansas. All right? It's a very, very good dub for Florida. Week 10 versus LSU. Now, this is a very scary team. We played them last year, and unfortunately, Florida had to play them in a game where they sort of found their identity. Jaden Daniels went insane. He threw for like six touchdowns, or threw and rushed for like six touchdowns, like 400 yards, something like that. We lost them 45-35, which wasn't even that bad, but we got the picture. They're a very, very good team. Now, if Jaden Daniels comes out and does what he did last year, this is going to be a very hard game for UF to win. Now, we did play them better last year than I think we're going to play them this year just because we had a little bit more firepower at the QB position, which is just something we needed in that game last year. Unfortunately, Jaden Daniels, I think, is going to be one of those guys who's going to be competing for a Heisman, and he's probably going to be the premier dual-threat guy in the league. Not to mention this LSU team is probably going to be a top-5, top-10 team all season, most likely end up competing for a national championship. I think this game, like I said, is going to go worse for Florida, having to play at LSU. 
I think this is going to be a loss for us. But it's not the end of the world. Dropping to seven and three. Week 11 versus Missouri. Now, these two teams over the past five or six years or so have been pretty even. They've split the last three games three and three. Now, UF will have to go to Missouri at this game, but I don't think that's going to be much of a factor. I was at the game when we played them last year, and they never really, it was a close game, but they never really felt like they were threatening. You know, the whole game, we kind of felt like we were in the driver's seat, and we had them right where we wanted them. Even though it was a close game, I just never felt like they were about to make a move to push ahead or anything. Now, I think UF is going to win this game with a dominant run game. I'm going to make a bold prediction that Montrell Johnson and Trevor Etienne combined for around 300 yards rushing. Now, I understand that's a lot of yards, but these are two kind of extreme caliber players who can do that. One of them can pop off for 180, 200 yards, even when the other one doesn't. But that's what you need. You just need one of those guys to be able to produce like that every game, which is something I very well think you could get from both of these guys. All that said, I think you beat Missouri at Missouri going 8-3 and three into the last game, Week 12 versus FSU. Now, last year, all we heard all season was how good this FSU team was and how they were going to destroy Florida with how talented their roster was. And what happened? It took everything FSU had to beat Florida. They put up 45 points, which was more than they put up on any team all season, and they only won by 7 points, a single possession they aren't going to be able to produce that much like extreme caliber point like pushing like they came at us with everything they had they played us as hard as they played any team all year not to mention we almost won if it wasn't for a missed face mask call but you know it's 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 fine we've 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 moved past it fsu is going to be a good team this year there's no doubt about that but i think they're going to be the same kind of shades of a team that you saw last year we look at the 9-3 and three record we saw from FSU last year, and you're like, that's a good team. And it is a good team. Don't get me wrong. But they were 9-0 and against unranked teams, and they were 0-3 against ranked teams when they played them. Mike Norvell still has yet to win a game against a ranked team. That's just something that you have to take into factor. This is a very good team. This is a very good team. But we haven't seen that experience show yet. And that might change by the time we play them. But for right now, I just don't think they have the necessary they could beat us don't get me wrong but i think that uf is going to shock people i think fsu is going to have to come into the swamp and beat us which they haven't done since 2017 it's going to be a tall task i think arguably my biggest upset prediction of the season i think uf is going to knock off fsu in a close game and shock the college football world by knocking out a playoff caliber team finishing at nine and three and securing a new year's six bowl now uf i think is going to go nine and three I think the ceiling of this team is around 10 and 2. Unfortunately, I think the floor is around 7 and 5. You could lose a game to Kentucky. You could lose that game to Arkansas. You could lose that game to FSU. But the important thing is it's about improvement. Last year Billy went 6 and 7. He went 6 and 6 in the regular season. You just want to see that one step further, all right? Because you know, all you need to see, the fan base wants improvement. That's all they want. And I think Billy Napier is going to be able to deliver that. A lot of people think that this UF team is still rebuilding for the 2024 season. However, I have faith that this team can play much better behind a much better defense and behind new defense coordinator Austin Armstrong. I think we're going to shoot ourselves back into the playoff conversation, finishing around a top 15 team the season before the playoff expands to 12 teams. Next year, all you got to do is finish as a top 12 team, and then you have a chance. You could, you know, you could get into that national championship game. It's probably not going to happen, but you have an opportunity. I believe Billy Napier is the guy. I think he's going to return the University of Florida to its former football glory that we saw in the 90s, that we saw in the mid-2000s, winning and competing for a national championship every year. Yeah, that's that's the season prediction so far. First game right here is going to be August 31st at Utah. Second game, first home game, is going to be September 9th. Everything you need, prepare for the game. You can come get a Gator patch. Now, this season prediction video, it's going to be on YouTube. It's going to be on Facebook to link to the YouTube. And to get Gator merch, you got to remember, always go to Gator patch. And uh, that's it. Go Gators. Yeah.